All right, we're going to go from woke crime to woke fed. I don't know which is worse. I guess woke crime is worse, but who knows? Joining me now, Congressman Ralph Norman of South Carolina, French Hill of Arkansas. Gentlemen, thank you. You're very kind. You honor our show. Um, Mr. Norman, I begin with you. I mean, I'm, I say this tongue in cheek. Uh, I'm not in a good mood at all today about this crime story woke crime and woke fed. But this Sarah Bloom Raskin woman. I mean, everybody's against her except the far left greenies. The Chamber of Commerce is against her. 24 state financial officers, 24 states, they're against it. 41 industry group. And she's just this extreme green New Deal, green climate change. I mean, huh? Really? Is this what we have to put up with? You know, Larry, when is it the job of the Federal Reserve uh, to regulate fossil fuel companies and to say that you're going to penalize them if any banks have ties to it? Uh, where is the role uh, that, that she's advocating and her history has been? Uh, basically, everything is climate change. And for her role as the Federal Reserve, it's every – I'm surprised it's not more uh, than 24 groups that came out against her. It shocked me the Chamber of Commerce did uh, being against her. But no, she will be a train wreck. Uh, I don't think there's any impartiality in her. And so it'll be interesting uh, why they don't grill her. I have no idea and really try to find out why in the world she's uh, – make her explain her positions, which I don't think she can do. Well, I don't know the outcome. I mean, the hearing was today. And we, we'll have, I think, Pat Toomey will come on tomorrow and tell us what happened. But French, I mean, you know, it's funny that of all the qualified, I don't deny that Ms. Raskin has, you know, quote unquote, professional credentials. What I am saying is she has bad values and bad policies and bad judgment. In other words, she's going to be the head bank supervisor uh, at the Fed. And French, where does it say that their job is to allocate credit? I thought their job was to ensure safety and soundness and capital adequacy, French Hill. Well, there you're right. It's good to see you. Good to be with you. Ms. Raskin does have professional qualifications, as you say, but she's wrong on this issue, and she knows better because of those professional qualifications. The Fed has no statutory authority to do this. They need to focus on price stability. And yet Joe Biden is consistently appointing people that have a Green New Deal approach and not their statutory obligation to capital markets in the case of Gary Gensler at the SEC, bank regulation at the OCC, or bank regulation here at the Fed and price stability in the monetary policy arena. So she's off the grid on terms of uh, what the, her policy positions are, and she should know better because of those qualifications. Yeah, I mean, she worked in the Treasury, and she's been a Fed governor. You're right. She's old enough uh, and experienced enough uh, to, to know better. Mr. Norman, here, um, I want to, I got another one here. I want to put this in. I, I don't want to obsess about Ms. Raskin, because I got another one here. This Lisa Cook. Um, she's an economist, again, with professional qualifications in Michigan State. And she's been nominated to the Fed. And I want to elevate her visibility. Uh, she has called America systemically racist. She called Trump a fascist. She said the Trump administration uh, was leading the country towards a genocide similar to the Holocaust. Okay, hearing that? She said uh, NASCAR folks are a bunch of uneducated people. And uh, she uh, promoted bailing out the rioters in 2020. You know, here's this left-wing crime. Let's protect the criminals, not the victims. I mean, that's a hell of a resume for a Federal Reserve governor. I mean, don't you think, really, Ralph Norman, is that the best we can do? America's genocidal, uh, systemically racist. What, what is the Fed's role in systemic racism again? Huh? Did I miss something here? I mean, I started my career in open market operations at the New York Fed, admittedly well into the last century. But where does it talk about this stuff as the qualifications? Well, and, and her words speak uh, as to what, where she will be as a seven-member seven, seven panel. Uh, no, that's what they believe. And they're weaponizing uh, the Federal Reserve like they're weaponizing the, the judicial system uh, all over this administration. And it's the people. And as French said, she's got qualifications, but her judgment is not there. Mm -hmm. And to make statements like that and to put them on such an important role as uh, uh, the Federal Reserve, I mean, every bank... Uh, every energy company ought to be petrified 
that these people are going to have a say so in the future of their company. And we're just coming off the, uh, the, the worst pandemic in the history of this country. So uh, everybody ought to be up in arms. We ought to have all 50 states uh, getting involved with this and opposing this. Now, not all of them are conservative, but uh, they ought to weigh in on this. But the thing is, French, you know, she's supposed to be an economist with good judgment. So let me ask it. It's like an economics question. Okay, mm -hmm. Ms. Raskin, you want to keep money away from fossil fuel bank, fossil fuel bank lenders and fossil fuel companies. Okay, you want to allocate credit. That's bad enough. What exactly are you going to replace it with? 75% of the fuel, energy and power that drives this country is from fossil fuels. About 5% is from renewables. I have no problem with renewables. You have no problem with renewables. But what exactly is she going to replace these renewables with if she kills the fossil fuel industry? In other words, I, that's an economics question and it's also an inflation question, right? Because if you kill the fossil fuel industry, what happens? Supplies dry up. And prices go sky high. We've already seen a bunch of that. So let's do it on economic ground. Maybe she's really not qualified as an economist. Well, I think as a macroeconomist, she knows that if you cut supply, you drive up price, higher prices at the pump, higher prices in manufactured goods for plastics. Who does that hurt? Low-income working people, the people she purports to support. What is inflation? Uh, hurt. It hurts working people, people on a fixed income. Her policies are inflationary. Her policies are also against the national security of the United States. We want to be energy independent. We want to be the world's largest exporter. We're the cleanest energy producer in the world, and she's speaking against that. When you say that climate is tomorrow's challenge, and you disconnect us from fossil fuel production and don't replace our reserves, you get higher prices, a weaker United States, no energy independence, and you impoverish the world, which depends on fossil fuels even more than the U.S. So it's exactly counter to her social justice narrative. Yeah, you're right about that, French. You know what? It sounds like she's a lousy economist, too. I don't care how many degrees she's had and what job she's had. Mr. Norman, the stock market... Uh, had another drubbing today. The Dow was down over 500 points. The Nasdaq got creamed. The S&P got creamed. This is not the first time. It's been kind of a bumpy new year. What's going on here? What do you think is going on? I know you're not an investment strategist, but on the Kudlow show, we all take on different roles and wear different hats. <laughs> Larry, I think this is a preview of coming attractions. When you look, see the earnings of these companies, particularly with everything we faced, uh, and I'm a real estate developer, uh, stocks are going to take a, a beating, and particularly if, if this administration keeps putting people like Ms. Raskin and others uh, who are having policies. It's a national security issue. And so, no, I, I think it's going to be a rocky road for, I know in my industry, the construction industry, we face inflation. We're having a hard time getting supplies. Uh, and this is across the board. But, but as French says, this country isn't ready for batteries to power our planes. Uh, and if you talk to this administration, they think it is. That's their mindset. French, and, uh, it's French when's, I'm going to give you the last word. French Hill, when's the Fed going to take away the punch bowl? Because the money supply is still growing at 15% year on year. It's up 40% annually the last two years. That's inflationary. So far, I keep hearing Janet Yellen. Your pal, Janet Yellen, says the inflation rate is going to be 2% at the end of this year. A, do you buy that? And B, how can that happen before the Fed takes the punch bowl away? Well, I think she's still listening to the Bee Gees because the last time we had it like this was uh, was the 70s. And she's wrong. She's wrong on fiscal policy, Larry, which is inflationary. And she's wrong not to know that we need to taper the securities purposes and raise rates slowly. And we should have done that over a year ago. And on top of that, we have supply constraints and we have constraints on getting people back to work due to regulatory policies of this administration. It's a perfect storm for inflation. Mr. Norman, uh, French Hill is a very clever chap. I've known him about 40 years. Do you know who the Bee Gees are, Congressman Norman? <laughs> Yeah, that's a uh, that's not a band, is it? Well, that's not a uh, they don't play music, do they? I wasn't born there. All right. Oh my cut, god. Cut 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 and the We're segment. staying alive it's, here, buddy. It's time to go out. Thank you. You're both terrific. Congressman Thank Ralph Norman and Friend Hill. Thanks ever so much.